Okay, so next we have the lesson 2 of our module 5 in page C12, which is the environmental hygiene. So, in this chapter, the student will be able to first understand the importance of environmental hygiene in the kitchen. Second, identify insects and rodents that infest the food service establishment. And lastly, learn various ways to prevent, eliminate, and control insects and rodents. Okay, so hygiene in the production area is of a paramount importance. So, initially, initially the premises should be constructed in a manner that eases maintenance and cleaning so it is essential that the areas where food uh, is prepared and cooked are well lit and ventilated that the layout of equipment enables the floor and walls and also the ceiling to be cleaned easily a maintenance and cleaning system should be made in order to ensure uh, the proper maintenance and well-being of the equipment so in order to maintain hygiene in the working environment the following should be seriously considered first uh, pest control so insects and rodents are considered pests in all food establishments so they do not only damage stores food items but helps spread various microorganisms that can cause serious foodborne illnesses so common insects and rodents that are a threat to food service establishments are among the following so first we have the rats cats flies cockroaches mosquitoes lizards lice ticks ants moths beetles so the key element to a success successful pest control program is prevention however no single measure will, eff uh, will effectively prevent or control pests or insects and rodents in a food service establishment. So it takes a combination of three separate activities to keep pests in check. So among them are the following. First, prevent. Prevent the entry of insects and rodents in the food establishment. Second, eliminate. Eliminate water and places where insects and rodents can hide. And lastly, implement. Implement an integrated pest management program to control insect and rodents pests that enter the establishment. Okay, next we have the insects. So insects may be small and small, but they are apparently greater in numbers. So they are considered enemy in the food service establishment due to the following reasons. First, they help spread various diseases. Second, they destroy equipment and other areas in the food service uh, establishment. Uh, third, they contaminate the food with microorganism. And lastly, it is an eyesore that can cause of disgust to the food service establishment. So insects needs water, food, and ideal breeding in food uh, in place in order to survive. So the best method of insect control is keeping them out of the food service establishment, coupled with good sanitation and integrated pest management when needed. Okay, next we have flies. So we have house flies or langau, blow flies or lagoon, and fruit flies are the types of flies that are most commonly found in the food service establishment. So the house fly is the most likely to spread diseases. So 21 species of flies are categorized as disease-causing flies because they are proven the carriers of Shiga toxin producing E. coli, Salmonella and Shigelia, and other microorganisms that cause foodborne illnesses. So a house fly can spread uh, uh, microorganisms by landing and stepping on human and animal faces. So this attract them because they could be a source of food or a good egg laying site for them. In an event that they ingest some of the fecal matter, thousands of deadly microorganisms are ingested by the fly. So a fly cannot eat solid food because it does not have a teeth and that can chew on the food so rather it vomits in the solid food in order to soften it before eating so in doing such many of the bacteria ingested by the fly are spread on the food making them contaminated in addition the hairs uh, of their feet 
body and wings are already contaminated with these microorganisms. In an event that a fly lands on a clean floor or clean working area, it is already contaminated. Okay, next we have uh, the blow flies. So they are usually larger than a house fly and comes in various shiny color. Among them are colors of green, blue, and bronze color. So they have a keen sense of smell and are usually attracted to the smell of food, garbage, fecal matter, and other decaying elements. Okay, next are the fruit flies. So fruit flies are the smallest of the three flies and are attracted by decaying fruit. So fruit flies are known to spread plant diseases. Okay, in controlling flies, the first step of controlling flies is to first eliminate, eliminate their food supply. Okay, next is uh, store food properly to protect it from flies. So, in many cases, improper garbage storage and handling is the main source of flies. Thus, it should be properly uh, uh, stored to protect it from flies. Next is to clean. Clean areas such as kitchen, dining, toilet facilities properly to avoid flies getting attracted to these areas. And lastly, is uh, I, number four is to equip windows, entrances, loading and unloading areas with fly screens or air curtains to prevent the entry of flies in the area. And lastly is uh, to control. So an instant electrocutor traps are devised used to control flying insects such as moths and house flies. So the trap contains a light source that attracts the insects to a high voltage wire grid. So uh, electrocuting systems using sticky st sticky traps also attracts insects so it is also effective against flies but uh, and they are usually being hanged in an ideal area to trap the flies okay it is very important that if we have this uh, control pest or the instant electrocutor we use this away from the food uh, food preparation area or in the kitchen to avoid food contamination okay next are the cockroaches so there are many varieties of cockroaches the most common of the kitchen are the uh, in the kitchen are the german cockroaches so like flies, cockroaches also are source of microorganisms that are harmful to humans. So they crawl from toilets and sewers into the kitchen, running over the utensils, the food service areas, and the unprotected food. They carry bacteria on their hair, legs, and body as well as in their intestinal tract. So cockroaches always avoid the light and they usually hide in cracks and crevices under or behind an equipment so this there is a possibility that you have a cockroach infestation and do not notice it because they only come out when it's dark so the visible signs of cockroach manifestation or infestation is to look for their droppings so cockroach control so the following should be considered in controlling cockroaches so first uh, maintain so it is very essential to maintain cleanliness and order both inside and outside of the kitchen. Next, eliminate. Eliminate the hiding places by picking up un unwasted materials such as boxes and rugs. Okay, number three, fill. Fill cracks and crevices in floors and walls and around uh, equipment. Okay, next, the doors and windows should be tight fitting. Okay, next, check incoming food supplies for signs of infestation. And next, store food in containers that are insect-proof and have a tight-fitting lid. And lastly, keep floor tables and floor clean and free from food waste. So, cockroaches are best controlled by insecticides that remain active for several days when sprayed on cracks and crevices. So, certain cautions should be followed when spraying insecticide inside the kitchen as they might contaminate the food items. 
Okay, so next we have the moth and beetles, or in waray waray we call is uh we call it as um sa sa amin we call it as book book. Okay. So, these two insects usually attack rice and flour in the kitchen. So, ito yung mga insects na nakikita natin usually na nag-infest ng ating mga, ng ating mga bigas, ng ating mga uh, harina. So, they, uh, they lay their eggs on these food items and has the ability to multiply rapidly. So, the best way to control these insects is to examine incoming shipment for signs of infestation. So, reject infested deliveries all at once. So, in an instance that you discover an infestation in your kitchen, immediately isolate or discard the food item. Okay. Next, we have the rodents. So, rodents adapt easily to human environments and tolerate a wide range of conditions. They may carry germs that can cause a number of diseases, including salmon, salmoniosis, plague, marine um, urine typhus and leptus pyrosis. So the term rodent includes first the Norway rats, second the roof rats, and third is the house mice. So the Norway rats are the common, uh, the most common. They are the big looking rats and burrow in the ground around the buildings and sewers. So a Norway rat will eat almost any food but prefer uh, garbage, meat, fish, and cereal. So, they stay close to food and water. Next is uh, the roof rat. So, it is smaller than the Norway rat, but it is a very agile clam climber. So, they usually hide in the attic of buildings. Roof rats uh, prefer vegetables, fruits, cereals, and grain for food. Okay, so next, uh, next is the house mouse. So it is the smallest of the domestic rodents. It is found primarily in and around buildings nesting in walls, cabinets, add stored goods, and the house mouse is a nibbler and it prefers cereals and grains. Okay? So these are the signs of rodent infestation. It is very difficult to see rats during daytime since they are nocturnal creatures and only goes out during the night. The only way to find out is to look this uh, for the signs of their presence and among them are the following. So first are the droppings. Droppings, the presence of a rat mouse fesses is the best indication of infestation. So free uh, uh, fresh droppings are usually moist soft and shiny whereas an old dropping becomes dry and hard so norway rats have the largest of the droppings about an inch in length with rounded ends okay next are the runway runways and burrows so rats stayed in a limited area they are very cautious and repeatedly use the same paths and trails so outdoors, outdoors in grass and weeds, you can see paths worn down that are about 2 to 3 inches wide. Okay. Next is rub marks. So rats prefer to stay close to walls where their highly, uh, highly sensitive whiskers can keep in contact with the wall. By using the same path, their bodies rub against the wall or baseboard. So the oil of oil of the of their body of the rat are deposited and can create a black mark so that is why we called it rub marks okay so next we have the gnawings so the incisor teeth of a rat grows for uh, four to six inches a year a result rats have to do some gnawings to keep their teeth short enough to use so they usually gnaw on woods and other furniture or kinikit nila yung woods and furniture this is the reason why we see those uh, 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 marks on woods and furnitures at home it's because uh, rats grows four to six inches a year so they have to maintain their teeth short enough to use okay 
Okay, next we have the tracks. So the tracks may be observed anywhere along rat or mouse runs both indoors and outdoors. So dust in not frequently used room are good places to look for tracks. Okay. Next we have the miscellaneous signs. So rodent uh, urine stains can be seen without uh, with ultraviolet light. So rat hairs can also be found in walls and other areas. Okay. Next is the rodent control. So effective rodent control begins with a building and grounds that will not provide a source of food, shelter, and breeding areas. So the grounds uh, around the food establishment should be free of uh, litter, waste, refuse, uncut weeds and grass. Okay. Next is uh, uh, newest equipment, boxes, crates, and other materials should be neatly stored to eliminate places where pests might hide. Get rid of all materials that may provide food and shelter to these animals. Okay, in an event that the rodents are out of control, it would be ideal to contact, to, to contact local pest and rodent control companies. Okay, so that's it for our module 5 in THC12. I hope you, co you can study uh, well for our final examination. And thank you and God bless.